Welcome back to Prime. I'm Katie Fitz. Today we're talking about the Dallas Symposium, the David Dillon Symposium. It's all about Texas architecture. We have with us today Kate Holliday, the Assistant Professor of Architecture and Director of the David Dillon Center for Texas Architecture, the University of Texas Arlington, and Nate Udaly, the Executive Director at the Dallas Architecture Forum. Welcome. So Kate, let's start with you. And first off, tell me a little bit about the David Dillon Center of Architecture. Well, we just started the David Dillon Center for Texas Architecture this year. Okay. Uh, the primary goal of the center um, and at the School of Architecture is to promote more public dialogue about architecture and urbanism in North Texas. Uh, if you think about it, architecture is everywhere. It's all around us. Um, we're in our houses in the morning, then we go out on the highway, we go past buildings all day long. We don't necessarily think about them, think about what we like, what we don't like, where it came from. And of course, in architecture school, we think about that all the time. So what we'd like to be able to do is to take some of the things that we do in architecture school and bring it to the public. Um, and what this does in the long term is carries on the tradition that David Dillon started. And of course, David Dillon was the architecture critic for the Dallas Morning News for 25 years, between 1981 and 2006. Um, and in his work across that 25 years, you can really see this concentrated attention and concern for how Dallas uh, developed, how Fort Worth is developing, how the entire region was growing uh, through its architecture and through urban planning. And with the loss of David uh, through his um, premature passing in, in 2010, uh, we have a real hole in the discussion of architecture here in North Texas. So what the goal of the center is, is to try to take a little piece um, of that puzzle and bring the expertise of the architecture school to, to the public. So is David Dillon, is he connected to UTA in other ways besides just being a writer or? Um, we created the connection to David Dillon and named the center in his honor because his widow, Sally Dillon, very generously donated his professional and personal archive of papers um, to the library at UT Arlington. Um, so in our library at the moment, the librarians and archivists are very hard, uh, hard working. Uh, they are going through his papers, processing them, putting them in order, so that we can learn from uh, the tremendous efforts that his career um, took in addressing architecture here. For the most part, in his papers, what we have are his reporter's notebooks. Um, we have his research materials. We have his recorded interviews with architects and city planners and city officials. Um, it's just a tremendous resource for thinking about where the city has been, where it's going, um, and what kind of issues we can look back on to think about how we've gotten to where we are. How does it directly benefit UTA? Is it just you know, giving people more resources and getting people talking about it? or? That's part of it. Okay. Um, I can tell you from my personal perspective as a historian of architecture, I've already used his papers um, okay. to help me in a project that I've been working on about the architect O'Neill Ford um, and his work for Texas Instruments, um, designing the, the first of the pieces of the Texas Instruments um, research facilities up in Richardson. Um, that was a great resource in preparing a paper that I gave down in San Antonio at Trinity University where we were discussing O'Neill Ford and his impact in Texas. So for me personally, it's already been great. Over the long term, we want other people to use these papers as well. Okay. Um, and to address specifically um, the materials David accumulated about Dallas architecture. And I think another really interesting part of it, and it's something that, that we intend to address as well, is what happens to people who write about architecture about the career itself, about where you can write, um, where books come from, how you get published in a magazine, his contracts are in there, there are all kinds of great things to look at for thinking about these things. Well, speaking of books, we have a lot of books in front of us. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about some of these? Absolutely. <clears throat> and I brought in a couple of examples of, of David's books. He wrote okay. for the Dallas Morning News, but he also um, wrote books. And one of the most interesting books probably for the um, viewers here is his book, Dallas Architecture, 1936 to 1986, which obviously covers a 50-year period in the history of Dallas architecture. For anyone who um, is thinking maybe we don't have a lot of great buildings here in North Texas, this is a great place to look to find out that really we've got a lot of really <laughs> great buildings. And David had a real gift for bringing the buildings to life on, on the page as well. Um, I brought in one other of his books, and there are, there are more to choose from, but I just brought these two. Um, and this is The Architecture of O'Neill Ford, um, Celebrating Place from 1999, which is another great book for thinking about um, 
Texas architecture in particular, and the rich tradition of modernism that we have here in Texas. Um, through the work of O'Neill Ford, he's probably the greatest Texas architect of the 20th century. Another really great read, highly recommend it. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about the David Dillon Symposium. What exactly is this? The David Dillon Symposium, this is the first year that we've done the David Dillon Symposium. Okay. Um, the idea behind the symposium is both to bring some attention um, to David's work, to celebrate his career, and to really talk about um, what a great impact he had on our region. But then also, um, in the absence of a dedicated architecture critic at the Dallas Morning News, since he no longer writes there, to think about what the role of the critic is. Um, what does an architecture critic do for a city? Um, we have a, a selection of eight speakers, um, some from Texas, the rest from across the country, who are all engaged in writing about art and architecture for newspapers, for magazines, and books, um, online, and blogging. Um, and the goal is to try to think about what does this hole um, in the writing about architecture of Dallas-Fort Worth mean? Um, what does it mean for architecture criticism across the country as well? Okay, and so who, who are some examples of people that will be speaking? Well, the keynote speaker is Paul Goldberger, and I'll show one of his books okay. um, right now. Paul Goldberger um, has up until very recently been the architecture critic for The New Yorker, where he's been for about 12 years or so. Before that, he was at The New York Times. He's won the Pulitzer Prize for his writing on architecture. Um, and he is really the preeminent architecture critic in America. He'll be giving the keynotes um, on Thursday, April 26th at 7 o'clock at the Dallas Museum of Art. Um, and the book here is his most recent book, Why Architecture Matters. And it's a great example of the way that, that he writes. Um, he writes for everyone um, in trying to get them to turn their attention to the buildings that, that surround us every day. He's a terrific speaker. And I know he'll kick things off um, very well. The next day um, at this symposium, we then have uh, seven more speakers who are coming. Um, and I'll just give you a brief outline of who some of those people are. Um, we have also coming from New York, we have Alexandra Lang, who is one of our um, blogging architecture critics. And she has a recent book as well called Writing About Architecture. And this is a wonderful book for anyone who wants to write. Um, who wants to be able to express themselves about architecture, gives you some tips, things to look for, things you should read to become a better writer. So she will be um, there as well. She blogs for Design Observer. We have, um, from UT Arlington, we have our own Benjamin Lima, who is in the art history department. He also uh, writes extensively online about art and sculpture, especially in Texas galleries for both national and local publications. We have Stephen Fox, an architectural historian who's coming from Houston, who is very well known for his encyclopedic knowledge of Texas architecture. And he'll be talking about um, some of the early architecture criticism that was written in Texas in the 1920s and the 1930s. It'll be fascinating. We have Scott Cantrell, who uh, writes for the Dallas Morning News. Um, he is, of course, best known for his coverage of classical music. But since David Dillon has left, he now covers architecture. So he'll talk about that split beat and what it means to write on, on more than one uh, kind of art. Um, we also have Thomas Fisher, who is dean of the architecture school at the University of Minnesota. But he's also been an editor at Progressive Architecture in the past, and he writes for the Design Observer and is um, a very intelligent voice on the role of criticism in shaping our art and architecture culture. We also have coming as well um, Stephen Sharp, who for many years was the editor of Texas Architect, which is the publication of the Texas Society of Architects. So a regional magazine dedicated um, to the architecture of Texas. Um, we also, um, I will be moderating, and I will just show you my book, because it just came out. Um, and this is a book on a New York architect, um, Ralph Walker, who designed Art Deco buildings in the 1920s um, and the 1930s, and this is his great design on the cover, the Barclay VC Telephone Building at 140 West in New York. That's great. Thank you for sharing all that with us, and congratulations on your book. Thank you so much. So tell us, how can people register for the symposium? People can register um, either by calling the architecture school, and I believe we have the number um, available, and they can also go to the architecture school's website. Um, there'll be a list of all of the speakers, the registration fees, and there'll be a click through from that portion of the architecture school's website that will lead you to the online registration, which the Dallas Architecture Forum is very kindly handling for us. We're very appreciative of their support. 
um, in handling many aspects of putting the, the symposium together. Well, <clears throat> Nate, how about you tell us a little bit about the Dallas Architecture Forum and how it is related to the symposium? Sure, I'd be glad to. Well, the Dallas Architecture Forum is started about 16 years ago as a way to reach out not only to architects in Dallas-Fort Worth, but also to the general community about, as Kate mentioned, we live with architecture. Everything around us is impacting, uh, and these are all designed and built by someone. And so to try to raise awareness of architecture, design, and urbanism issues. And so we think it's very important to do this, and we do that in a variety of ways. We do a lecture series each year where we bring in speakers from around the world to speak about important architectural topics. We did a series last fall on Chinese architecture, and one of our speakers was just awarded this year's Pritzker Prize, which is recognized as the highest prize in architecture. We did a panel series focusing on local events, do touring, but then we also work with the Nasher Sculpture Center on a design symposium and with our colleagues at University of Texas at Arlington and an annual symposium. We're delighted to be supporting them as they've launched the Dillon Center and working with them. So as Kate mentioned, we've worked with UTA for a long time. They are the uh, architecture school for North Texas, and we're very delighted to support the important mission they have of not only educating the students there, but also reaching out to the community. So we work collaboratively and are working with them on the symposium. So as Kate mentioned, uh, we're working with her and her team in various aspects of the symposium. And it really is exciting to see Kate has lined up some of the leading authorities on architectural criticism from around the world to, to come to Dallas for this symposium. We think it's very important that people attend it. And again, it's not just for architects, it's for the general public. There'll be many items of interest for not only professionals, but also people that want to learn more about the world in which we live. So we encourage everyone to come. Well, that's great. So basically, the Dallas Architecture Forum, it's all about bringing in speakers to talk about architecture. Is that right? Well, we bring in speakers for our lecture series, but then our panel series, we really try to get people that live here within the community to talk about issues impacting our community. We've talked about the redevelopment of the Trinity River. We've talked about the new building for the Kimball Art Museum. Uh, we've talked about transportation issues, infrastructure issues. So we want to really engage the community and educate them so that they can make a difference in making our community a better place to live. Well, that's great. Thank you both so much. So if you want to register for the inaugural David Dillon Symposium, it is April 26th at 7 p.m. at the Dallas Museum of Art, and also April 27th from 11 to 5 p.m. at the Nasher Sculpture Center. You can visit www.uta.edu backslash architecture for more information or call the number on the screen 817-272-2313 to register. I want to thank both of you so much. Kate, Nate, thank you for coming. Remember, there are many ways that you can keep up with Prime on our website, onprimetv.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And I am Katie Fitz. We will see you next time.